Hello there. Just a quick little video for you guys because I picked up another computer. That's right. I have another one. This here is a Dell Inspiron 660S, released around 2013. And it's a okay desktop, despite it being eight years old, but it's in dire need of some upgrades. So I recently picked up this computer from the Facebook Marketplace for about 50 bucks, and it even came with a hard drive and a freshly installed copy of Windows 10. For 50 bucks, I'd say that's pretty good. Now, normally I would keep this computer, upgrade it, and actually use it for something, but I have slightly different plans for this thing. I'm going to be upgrading it and actually selling it to someone. And while, yes, it is eight years old, but with the right upgrades, I think it's got plenty of life left in it. And I think it'd be a great computer for someone. Currently, the system has a dual core Pentium. I think it's a G2020, I wanna say. It's a pretty weak CPU, especially by today's standards. Um, it's only got four gigabytes of RAM, a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and no graphics card. So yeah, with those current specs, even web browsing is going to be an issue. But luckily, we'll change that. We're gonna replace that crappy hard drive with an SSD. We're gonna replace that Intel Pentium with a Core i5. We'll be putting in a power efficient, low profile graphics card, and we'll max out the RAM to eight gigabytes. After those upgrades, I think this will be a pretty decent computer. Now, before we start the upgrades, we first need to clean this thing up because it's not terrible, at least on the board, but yeah, <laughs> that CPU fan is pretty clogged up. It's definitely not the worst I've ever seen, but that dust has got to go. With the power of video editing, I shall make this dust disappear. Ta-da! All clean. Well, mostly. Um, I wasn't able to get all the dust from underneath the fan, and there's some specs here and there still stuck in the heat sink. I don't know if you can see that or not, but for the most part, I got most of it pretty good. So let's fire this thing up here quick and check to see exactly how usable it is with the current specs. Power, check. Monitor, check. Mouse and keyboard, check. Ice cold beverage. Check. Here we go. All right, quick, let's get into the BIOS, which I think I remember how to do it on Dell. I think it's F12. Okay, there we go. All right, let's see here. BIOS setup. So we got a BIOS revision of A09 and BIOS build date of 11.22 of 2012. So pretty out of date, but it should be fine. And then we've got an Intel Pentium G2020 dual core processor clocked at 2.9 gigahertz with 128 kilobytes of L1 cache, 512 kilobytes of L2 cache, and three megabytes of L3 cache. And then a single four gigabyte memory stick clocked at 1,333 megahertz. So yeah, a pretty simple looking BIOS, but hey, if it works, it works. All right, let's see exactly how long this thing takes to boot. Okay, so it took about 25 seconds to get to the login screen, which it's not terrible for a hard drive, but it could definitely be better, especially after we upgrade this thing to an SSD. All right, let's check on the CPU speed here with uh, CPU-Z. Okay, so we got 285 on the single-threaded performance and 557.2 on multi-thread. So not terrible, but it could definitely be better. Just for reference here, it's just barely faster than a Core 2 Duo and definitely way, way slower than a top-of-the-line Core i9 processor. Also, literally nothing is going on right now and the hard drive is like pegged at 100%. Why? <sighs> Gotta love hard drives, man. All right, let's try out some graphical benchmarks here. Um, let's start with DirectX 11. Um, yeah, we'll keep shaders on high. Um, we'll keep that at four. Let's... Let's just keep anti-aliasing off and run at the native resolution of the monitor and just see how bad this thing chokes. <laughs> yep, 
exactly what I expected. What is that? <laughs> 10, 11 frames per second. Oh, 12 frames per second. <laughs> Still not playable. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a feeling. <laughs> not great. Okay, let's do something a little more reasonable. Let's do DirectX 9 this time. Um, set the shaders to low. Turn this all the way down to 1. Into aliasing off. And let's just do 800 by 600. Why not? There we go. That's a little better. We're finally getting a steady 30 frames per second. I mean, it's still not great that you got to turn the, the graphic settings all the way down, but... I mean, if you want to have your games looking like an Xbox 360 game from like 2006, then <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, let's try out web browsing next. Let's just see how long it takes to open up Edge. Okay, so it took about 10 seconds to open up Edge, and it took a solid like 35 seconds to get to the welcome screen. Yeah, not, not great. But let's see how long it takes to get to, say, Google.com. And go. Okay, like three seconds, so it's not terrible. So let's try searching up something here, see how long that takes. Okay, so it's not bad, despite the system only using a dual core processor and four gigabytes of RAM. But that's just general web browsing. Let's do something a little more demanding. Let's do YouTube. Well, this is already not looking very promising. <laughs> we clicked on the video, it played for two seconds, and now it's buffering. And mind you, I have a pretty decent Wi-Fi connection in here too. And we're also only playing in 480p. I can only imagine what it's going to do at 720 or even 1080p, let alone... <laughs> I almost wonder how it handled 4K. This thing would probably crash if it did 4K. <laughs> Let's just see how bad this thing is struggling right now. I'm curious. Come on, Task Manager. You can do it. Come on. I have faith in you. Okay, I mean, it's not terrible. We're using a little more than half of our RAM. And our hard drive is still pegged at 100%. And the CPU is just going up and down the whole time. So the CPU is doing okay. The RAM is not doing the best. And the hard drive is just <laughs> pegged at 100%. So that's probably where our problem is coming from. <laughs> that hard drive needs to go. And in case you were wondering, no, this thing cannot run Windows 11. Damn it. So yeah, I think you get the idea. This thing is in dire need of some upgrades for sure. Especially that crappy hard drive. God, that thing is wickedly slow. There's a good reason why I don't use hard drives as, uh, <laughs> as boot drives no more. They're just... Once you go SSDs, you never go back. I'm tired of seeing this thing suffer. We need to shut this thing down. Alright, first order of business. RAM upgrade. I got another stick of 4 gigabytes of DDR3 memory here which will bring the system up to a max of eight gigabytes. It does kind of suck that the system does not support more than that, but in 2021, I'd say eight gigabytes is the bare minimum for a usable um, system. And honestly, eight gigabytes will be enough, I'd say. Second, get rid of this crappy slow hard drive because that's all I can stand and I can't stand no more and replace it with a nice and speedy SATA SSD. We'll also be installing a low profile, low power uh, graphics card. Um, this is a GeForce GT 730. By far not the best <laughs> graphics card we could put in this thing, but the fact that this thing is such a small form factor, it really limits us in terms of what kind of graphics card that we can put in here. I originally wanted to go with a GT 1030, but uh, I didn't really want to spend the prices that I saw online. So I just ended up going with a cheap GT730. It'll be good enough for now. 
it'll be able to do Fortnite, Minecraft at low settings. It'll be decent for low-end gaming. Graphics card is in. Um, it is quite a tight fit, though. Um, the heatsink is, like, right up against the case. Um, but luckily, there is air intake vents right here, so at least the graphics card will actually be able to get fresh air. Unfortunately, the only way I was able to get this thing to fit in this case was to take off the cooling fan as well as the um, plastic shroud that houses the uh, cooling fan. So this thing is basically running all on passive cooling. Normally that wouldn't be a problem, but the heatsink on this graphics card is technically not designed for passive cooling. So it's going to get very, very hot, especially under load. So I might find a way to finagle this fan back on there. What I'm thinking about doing is um, basically the fan itself screws into this plastic piece right in the middle. I was thinking about just cutting that out, gluing it to the heat sink, and then just screwing in the fan that way. It's not the prettiest solution in the world. Trust me, I wish there was another option, but the other option is just let the graphics card cook itself. And I don't really want to do that. And finally, powering the whole shebang will be an Intel Core i5-3450S quad-core processor clocked at 2.8 gigahertz. This should be quite an upgrade over that dual-core Intel Pentium. Hopefully we don't need a BIOS update to get this thing working. Zero insertion force, work your magic. Perfect. <laughs> CPU is now inserted. Thermal paste. That should be enough. CPU is now installed. And with that said, I think we're ready to get things started. Okay, moment of truth. Here we go. See if it posts. Yes! <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so for the final specs, we now have an Intel Core i5-3450S clocked at 2.8 gigahertz, quad core processor, 256 kilobytes of L1 cache, one megabyte of L2 cache, and six megabytes of L3 cache. We have a total of eight gigabytes of RAM. There's our Western Digital 500 gigabyte SSD. And obviously the graphics card is working perfectly fine, otherwise <laughs> we would have no video. Okay, let's change this to USB storage. And that should be good. So now it's time to install Windows. Also just listen how quiet this thing is without a hard drive. Literally the only noise that you hear inside this computer is the power supply fan and the CPU fan. Everything else is dead silent. And here we are, at long last. Windows 10 and all the drivers are now installed. So right off the bat, boot times are much, much better. Compared to that hard drive, this thing from a cold boot gets to the login screen in five seconds. That is impressive. Plus, check it out. If we open up Chrome, bam, instantly. God, SSDs are so nice. All right, let's just see how much better our CPU Z score is with that new Core i5. Oh yeah, that's already much better. Let's see, let's compare it to that same Core 2 Duo that we did with the dual core Pentium. And look at that. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's quite a performance boost for sure. Not so much on the single thread performance, but multi-thread is <laughs> a big difference. Okay, let's run the Sanctuary demo again. Um, we'll run the same um, settings as last time, DirectX 11. Um, we'll turn off ambient occlusion for now. I think that might be a little too much for this system. Um, shaders high, um, anastrophe uh, 4, no anti-aliasing, full screen at native resolution. Let's see how much better this thing is now. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'd say that's way better. Because I think originally we were getting like, what, single digits or something like that? 
and now we're getting above 60 frames per second or around there. Oh yeah, that, <laughs> that is much better. Now, obviously it's not gonna be doing high settings on the newest games because it's a low end graphics card from like 2014. But for some lighter titles, like, I don't know, like real time strategy games or some 2D games, maybe some light esports games like Rocket League at the low settings, I think it'd be, I think it'd do pretty decent. Unfortunately, no matter how hard I tried, I could not get that graphics card fan to fit in this case, no matter what I tried. I tried using tape, I tried modifying that um, plastic bracket that actually holds on the fan. <laughs> it just will not fit. If it just had a few more centimeters of space, it would be a perfect fit. But <laughs> it's just enough to where it does not have enough room for the fan to spin. And honestly, even with the graphics card passively cooled, it does a pretty okay job with temperatures. The highest I saw was like 85 degrees Celsius, which that's okay. Um, it's definitely, definitely not the best, especially without a fan, but it could definitely be worse. I think it'll, I think it'll be okay. So yeah, I would definitely call that a success for sure. I think this will be a great computer for someone. So thank you all for coming along on this little computer journey. And I'll see you all next time.